Camera rolling, audio rolling. Hey and what's up everybody, it's Peter and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you a workflow for maximum productivity. So you can edit your videos faster than Sam Coder and Peter Lindgren and James Matthews and Peter Lindgren and I already said that himself. If the projects are getting bigger and more complicated, it's necessary to work on your ability to organize stuff. Because if not, you're searching for a specific asset way too long and you're out of flow. I compared with a musician who suffers in the beginning to play this specific piece of music. Because if he's not able to find the notes quickly enough, he comes out of rhythm. Editing is something you can't do freestyle, like playing jazz piano or dancing. It's an art form you just can express very slowly, because it takes time to play it. But you can speed up the playing part if everything looks clean and organized in your timeline and in your project in general. If everything is nice and structured, you will find the notes in your editing software quickly. First, I usually have a folder with the date of the year and what type of project it is. For example, a client, a private or a YouTube project. Inside these folders, we can find the name of the project, which is made of the first three letters of the client and a number in the end. If it's your first video for this particular client, you start with a 0, 1. And after you get more projects, you can just count up to like 150. Inside this project folder, we have separate folders for Premiere Pro, After Effects, Video, Audio, Overlays, Music, Sound Effects, Images, external videos and assets in general. So if there are any just like sound effects you use for this particular project, just put it in the sound effect bin of the project. Then create a new project, click on browse and choose the location where you want to save the Premiere Pro file. For the Premiere Pro file we are about to save, we click on the Premiere Pro folder we just created and save it. And then again, the first three letters of the client and the 01 as well. And another 01 for the Premiere profile number. Because it's your first Premiere profile for this project. If Premiere is crashing and you need to save a new file, you can continue the number to 02, 03, 04 and so on. So you always know that the highest number is the newest project. <coughs> Thanks for Klein Aber for showing me that sick ass workflow. Shout out to the channel. It's just German but if I have any German subscribers, check out the channel and leave a big fat like. And if you want to work there, just send an application to this mail. Uh -oh. I was born in Brooklyn, baby. Best as soon as Premiere Pro is open, we can check if we are working in the default workspace. So that's the workspace I usually start with. Then I create all type of different folders in the project window for maximum organization. The folders I usually create are 01 sequence, 02 video, 03 audio, 04 music, 05 sound effects, 06 overlays, 07 images, 08 animations, 09 nests and the 10 after effects and the titles. You can make the video bin even more organized by putting another bin into this with the name of the type of camera you use. Or if you shot on different days with the exact date or if it was a specific scene in your video with a specific location, you can also put the name of the scene and the location in it. So you can see you can really push this to the limit. As soon as the clips are imported, I color code the clips by the different frame rates. Just click on frame rates and the program will sort everything by the frame rate. Then you can mark the section of the 25 FPS clips, right click, go on label and choose a color. So this is very helpful because now you can quickly check if you can make a sick shot even more sick by putting it in slow motion. So now the most important part, setting up the timeline. Create a new sequence, choose your camera with a preferred frame rate behind. And if you want to edit in full HD, just like choose full HD resolution. After you created the sequence, you can move all of your footage into that first sequence. For the first round, I go through the whole footage and check the clips by quality. I sort them by OK, good and excellent. Every time I see a section I like, I cut it, I rate it and I move it up to the video track with my rating. Everything what's bullshit, I delete straight away. If there are different scenes in your footage or different locations, you can create a marker by clicking M on the keyboard, extend the marker and name it to the name of the location or scene or whatever. That helps you to find the clip way quicker. You can also color code these markers by the different locations or scenes or whatever. After you went through the whole footage and the timeline looks nice, structured and organized, the actual editing process starts.
For this process, I usually create a pancake timeline. That means I sometimes work with two or three timelines at the same time. So I just duplicate my existing timeline and move it down. Now we have two timelines stacked on top of each other. The top one will still be the one which I sorted. I call it the ingredients sequence or timeline. Sequence and timeline is basically the same. The bottom timeline will be totally empty because I just deleted everything out of it. I call it the canvas timeline where you just put the dish on. Okay. Now we can name the different tracks. A7S1, A7S2, A7S3, Go, Go. Drone, After Effects comps, Rating. Overlay 1, Overlay 2, Overlay 3, and so on. I call the audio tracks Audio 1, Audio 2, Music 1, Music 2, SFX 1, SFX 2, SFX 3, and so on. Now I go through the upper timeline and check the footage again. If there is something I like, I drag it down to the lower timeline. I repeat this whole process until I'm done with the rough edit. After the rough edit is done and all the clips I like are in the lower timelines, I start shaping the story, adding music and just make it nice. Then I try to match the music as good as I can to the video. After this step is done, I start adding sound effects. After this is done, I start color grading. If I'm happy with the edit, I'm going to export it by clicking export or command N. I usually choose YouTube 4K, set bitrate to CBR2 and 60 Mbits. Click on render at maximum depth and use maximum render quality. After this is done, I click like, I click subscribe, I write down in the comments my thoughts about this tutorial because that's always appreciated. I'm going to upload more stuff in the future and also like different type of content because at the moment I'm just doing like talking very fast and make bad jokes but I have a lot of other topics to share as well. If you don't want to miss that I would again really highly appreciate if you subscribe. Those of you who watched until this point thanks a lot for watching and peace.